Hello, my name is Karak City 2 and welcome back to my Greg Block series. I'm just getting some of my neutronium out of my replicator. If we take a look. I have actually, while I'm down here, I set up a couple more machines. One of them is uh, this one. This is the coming out of my plasma machine, so I just set up a a block so it's turning the nickel into blocks and then I set up this for uh, tritanium um, because I don't know I screwed up the neutronium up here it's off so this is never gonna empty out um, so I wanted I basically made separate fluid solidifiers uh, for each of my different fusion fuels um, but anyway so neutronium dust very very difficult to make but ironically you can just melt the dust in a <laughs> furnace alright so I got 23 of my neutronium ingots We're doing pretty well here Oops. And, oh, not that. Ultimate battery. That's what I want. So I've decided I think I'm going to go after the ultimate battery. Um, it's going to take me a little while to get it. Uh, I can make most of this stuff relatively easy. This is going to take a while. Well, actually, I have all that. Uh, these, all easy stuff to make. This is going to be difficult with the neutronium. Um, but I'm actually looking, now that I'm thinking about it, I have... I might have all these the stuff. So I have the six plates. All right, so 22. That's 22 neutronium. I have 23. Okay, so I don't yet. <laughs> but uh, it's this. Wait. No, I think I do. No. Because this requires... Uh... This is seven, I think. Wait. Yeah three ingots for the rods and no so six this is six yeah so I need six for that which will get this as well so anyway um, I'm actually doing pretty well with the neutronium here I did a little bit better but I'm gonna go after this first I think this is gonna be the very first thing I'm gonna use my neutronium for I think and then we will get obviously UV, UV battery buffers. Relatively easy for what I'm producing now. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll get four. I don't think I'm gonna get. I don't know. I I gotta test out this how this these work to be honest with the ultimate batteries. Because uh, like I said last episode, I don't know, this will never fill up, so it will never move on to the second battery, unless I'm pumping in I don't know how many amps, and i got to test it out. Um, but I wanted to get started with this by crafting the four wetware mainframes, and I think I have actually gotten every single thing I need to do all four at once, and I thought that was kind of cool. So we need like 2,000 sand, 2,200 gold, Let's see what else, 700 olivine, 700 silver, 250 olivines, 864 capacitors, so it's pretty funny seeing all this crazy stuff. It's going to go through... I don't know how many. It has to cross 64 of them. Uh, let's see what else. 125 chips. 1500 stem cells. Anything else? 1500 glass. Uh, one thing I did notice was the hardest thing for me to get, ironically, was... Where is it? It's 12,000 silicon rubber foil. <laughs> need about 3,000. Uh, 3,000, like, 100 and something of the silicon rubber sheets. 
But anyway, I think it is time that we kick this off. It's also going to need 16 tritanium frames, so it's going to have to cook all that stuff up and everything. So let's get that started. Now that's probably going to take, I, I can only imagine, an hour or two to craft all this stuff up. So, yeah, I'll just let, I won't be probably playing this whole time, but um, we are done with the Neutronium, thankfully, but it's going to have to fill everything up. All right, but with that in mind, I've started building a new base that I think is going to be kind of cool, and you might have seen it, but here we go. So this is kind of the entrance to my new area. I'm kind of doing like an Egyptian kind of theme and with a big pathway. And then I will build my new base kind of on the end of this, I think. So I thought it would be kind of cool to go with a different texture. I've been looking at cobblestone the entire game. Um, so yeah, and I think I'll build a huge kind of base on this side. Um, haven't quite decided what I want it to look like, but kind of got the start of it, so I thought I'd just kind of show that off. Um, kind of got the inspiration from Chisel has hieroglyphics in the sandstone, so I thought that was kind of cool. And then these are just kind of hollow. So, yeah, this is kind of what I've started with my new base, and then I'm planning on, like I said, I want to get this base looking really good. I'm not super creative, so I don't know how like good the actual base is going to look, but I want to get all the machines and everything uh, like to the top. Why did this turn off? My low on... Am I running so many machines that it's like struggling for power? That might be... That might be the issue. Yeah, see, this is struggling. I'm just running too many machines now for a 16-slot battery buffer is the problem. Uh, yeah, and all these turned off. So this line... Yeah, it's just draining too much by the time it gets there, which eventually it'll all... Uh, when they finish their tasks, they'll all start. Um, we'll start going again. But anyway, let me. I'm going to cut here and then I will come back if I get something interesting. I'm just going to kind of start, continue building my base out a bit. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad. I split up my uh, electrical blast furnace. Ironically, it doesn't look like I'm creating any of this stuff yet, so it will probably get to that because I know I need lots of stainless steel, don't I? Yeah, I need 763. So, oh, I also actually had to create a new, well, expand. I had to expand one of my crafting things for that recipe. It used 95,000 bytes, and I only had 64k, so I had to add another 64k on. So, but yeah, let me just uh, let this cook away, and I will maybe start building some more, and we'll come back when uh, something interesting starts happening. All right, so I have crafted up my wetware frames. Uh, circuit frames, and I have my superconductors and electronic energy ore clusters, and I went to actually, I needed a few more of these high-powered uh, circuits. So I went to craft it and realized I am out of crushed sphalerite, which is a bit of a pain. Um, because I need to make netherrack for that and sift netherrack. And that is a bit annoying. It's not difficult, but I mean, it does use redstone, which, once again, isn't even difficult to get. But it takes a little while to produce the lava, is the main problem. 
Now I added a second crucible on this side. So now it's going twice as fast, but with the uh, 8x melting it down, it's just not that very fast. So I have a little bit here, but what I've decided to do, oops, wrong way, <laughs> I've decided to um, make a, a ZPM a ZPM level uh, sieving machine to really boost my resources that I'm getting from sifting. So this in a string mesh, let's see, at LV you're getting like 5%, so MV is 10, HV is 20, EV is 40, which I'm doing it at now. So I only have a 40% chance to get this from Netherrack. So I figured, why not just go crazy and do ZPM? Because why not? So I put the recipe in here and uh, figured I would just go ahead and make a ZPM electric sieve. Doesn't actually doesn't even really seem that difficult. I did the, if we look at the recipe, you can use either a mainframe, the, the processor, or the, the computer, or the assembly. And I decided I usually go for the best circuits I can, so I went for these. So I don't know. Let's, uh, the only thing it needs to craft a lot of is... Where is it? The platinum something. Can't find it. Anyway, there it is. So it needs to collect 1,280 of those. But I think we'll uh, put our assembly machine to the test here. So nothing too crazy. It does need, uh, I think, Nequata. What does it need? I can't remember the ZPM holes. No, it just needs iridium. Oh, it needs the wires, though. Yeah, that's right. A lot of cables for the wires. Um, but I figured, you know, hey, why not? I'll throw it down. Oh, excuse me, I sneezed. I'll throw it down here. Uh, kind of with my other machines that actually I created for the better percent chance rate. So I'll throw it down here. Obviously, it's not ideal, but eventually I will be moving all this stuff to my other base. Um, I'm trying to decide what I'm taking and what I'm not. I may just leave all this over here. Uh, not entirely sure. I probably am not going to bring over my diesel gen anymore. It's done it's, oop, a little leg spike. Um, 6,000 EU per tick is just not really worth it anymore, to be honest. And my Large gas turbine, I'm not even running anymore either. Um, the other things are just too good. Yeah, and especially when I upgrade these eventually, when I put the neutronium holes in here, and I could even put, if I want to go absolutely crazy, you could do the max motor holders, which require superconductor wires or a ring but it requires a neutronium, eight neutronium. So that's actually not even that bad, but you know, times eight is a lot of neutronium. And then these will output 32,768. I think that is the max these plasma turbines will output even with higher hatch, um, but we will see. Um, I tested that really quickly in a SS world and that's the max I got from that. Um, but anyway. I did have some issues with the assembly line as I was crafting the mainframe, those four mainframes, and I think the issue is when I am crafting multiple things in the, I was crafting these, which is only six slots, so it would put the six slots in, and I think sometimes it was getting 
<coughs> it was trying to craft the mainframe as well. And so it was putting some of the items in from both recipes at the same time, and it was getting clogged up. Um, so basically all I did was um, I had to take out a couple of the items. See, they're going to, they're being put in one at a time, which is fine. Uh, but when it tries to do multiple things at once is when it gets kind of messy, which I had a feeling it would. Um, but it was easy. I just canceled the recipe and then restarted it. The, the autocraft, I just canceled and restarted, and it kind of fixed it. All right, but anyway, let me wait till this is crafted up. It's actually not, ironically, this is what seems to be the, the hold up here. Uh, but yeah, ooh, that, I just noticed, that is going to take a while. The 63 steel that we got going, and I've split up my electric blast furnace here, so it's definitely kind of like, it's not as bad. Um, so it's like the, yeah, what am I trying to say? I have two running at once now. So, but anyway, let me cut and then we will come back when we get this and we can see how the electric sieve at ZPM works out. All right, I just got my cable and I did a backup just in case. I don't think we're still going to have a problem here. These can handle four amps. I really don't think this can output any more than 4 amps, to be honest. I still haven't quite figured it out. I've done some testing with the cables and the battery buffers and transformers, and I think I haven't figured it out, but still, still always get nervous. All right, so my only thing is if like these are all running, well, that shouldn't pull more than 4 amps anyway, so... Okay, so there's my electric sieve, and uh, I, I'm full on. How can I do this? Because I would want to have. How would I want? <laughs> well, it should be a hundred percent. So I could actually do spellerite, nether spellerite. No, I don't know. I'll probably just do an export and an input, and I'll have to split these up. That's probably what. Well, they already split up. Hmm. I'll probably have to do dense. That's a lot of dense cable, though. Anyway, let me just get this. I have some crushed nether arc. Let's let's do 64 so we can see how much we get from the ZPM. It should be, in theory, it should be 100%. So let's go get. My forge hammer. Which goes through this super quick. I love it. All right, and then we will get 1 stack and oh, I need the string mesh. And I can actually I'll probably I won't use this one anymore probably since it's kind of pointless. I should just break it down, but I'll leave it. All right. So there we go. And it does look like we're getting 100%. Yeah, we got 100% on each thing. Let's just double check. Uh, was it crushed another rack? I can get eight things. And yeah, there we go. So we can see now I have 100% on each, um, each item. So that's pretty amazing, especially if I... Uh, <laughs> If I throw like sand in here, oh my goodness, that'd be kind of funny. Or like, yeah, if I do sand in like aluminum or something, how funny would that be? 
I should get 100% of each. I don't know. I feel like we should test that out just for the fun of it. All right, let's pull all this out. I should get that um, macerated up, though, while we're testing this. There we go. Uh, yeah, because I needed that for uh, those high power conduits. Anyway, um, so yeah, we got our aluminum mesh. Let's see. Sand. Let's get one stack of sand and see what happens when we do that. Yeah, as we can see, 100% every single thing. So resources are even less of an issue now. So it's actually, I don't know, it's kind of fun to see that. But anyway, so that's my spell rights. So I can get my um, the high powered uh, things here. Now let's see. I needed 32. Yeah, it's still got to crush this down. So let me uh, let me work out the cables down here and the channels, more or less, and I've actually realized um, after talking on the Discord that I am doing the P2P tunnels incorrect. So when we move our base, I'm definitely going to fix this, all my P2P tunnels, and do it the correct way. But for now, they work. Um, but yeah, let me get my spellerates, let me get the rest of the items for the ultimate battery. Then the only thing, well, neutronium, I should have enough neutronium now. The only thing I need to do is uh, these field generators. And uh, we will have the ultimate battery. Five more neutronium here. Uh, unfortunately, this is just chewing through my neutral matter, which I figured it would. If we look at the uh, Neutronium. Uh, it costs 5,000 mil buckets each. And the manganese that I'm doing, because I have tons of it, only gives 30. So as we can see, <laughs> I am chewing through my neutral matter. I had used to have way more positive or neutral matter than I had positive matter, but now it's gone down. I mean, I still have lots. Um, but anyway, yeah, let me get the... Um, some more ingredients for my the ultimate battery. All right, just trucking along here, getting all the materials needed. I have started doing the ultimate field generator. So getting there. Uh, I have realized this gravity star, which is the ultimate nether star. It's going to need two neutronium ingots with a nether star and an autoclave. And the problem with this is that I am auto exporting the neutronium fluid into this fluid solidifier right here. It's so annoying that's off by like six mil buckets somehow. It seems like two mil buckets gets lost every once in a while, and I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I'm auto up putting this to my neutronium to make ingots. So if I put like two ingots in my system to melt this down, it's automatically going to extract that to that. And I don't want to mess with that because you need a bucket. You need a thousand millibuckets of neutronium to set that filter. And I don't I uh, want to have to wait for that again. So what I've decided is I'm going to set up my own little separate um, fluid extraction and an autoclave. It's going to be its own little separate one so the ingots won't ever, like the fluid won't ever actually go into the ME system. And 
the reason I'm doing it in this IV is because this needs IV. Um, IV power. I could do it in a ZPM one, the top tier that I can do right now, but that is a whole heck of a lot of... Actually, this isn't as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. I was thinking it was going to have like uh, robot arms and all sorts of stuff, but now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it doesn't. What would the fluid extractor? Yeah, I see pistons and I don't know. I just didn't feel like dealing with that, so I just did my own little one right here. Unfortunately, this is pushing this a bit close. Um... Maybe I'll be able to get rid of this. I'm not sure. But for now, we're just going to do fluid extractor there, auto uh, auto clave there. And what I'm going to do is pipe the neutronium into here. It's going to auto export the fluid, uh, the liquid neutronium into this auto clave. And then we will craft the nether stars. Um, the only problem with this setup is I can't have, I have to, I can't send the items to two separate machines this way. Like I can't put the, I can't put the interface on like two different machines here is the issue. Like one pattern can't go to two separate machines. I got to do. I have to put the pattern in this, so I can't do like, I mean I could do this to like a separate, I could do it to a chest and then have the chest auto with filters and all sorts of stuff, but that I'm not going to do. So I think I'm just going to do, oh, I also set up a new uh, crafting recipe. The We'll do one new Two neutronium equal one of that another star, I think we'll do. So this needs two ingots. And I need another stars. Do I have any on me? I have done. So we're not gonna do these a lot. So how about I just this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put eight nether stars in here. Like we'll just always keep those in there and we'll stock it up as needed. I don't think I'm gonna be using these very often. Um so yeah, two neutronium ingots. We'll put the two in there, it all ex to the auto export to this machine next to it, and then I will set that to auto extract into the ME system. I think that's the easiest way to do it. The only problem is this is right next to my ME system. I don't like that. Oh well. But there is our Gravity Star. And I'm actually, well, I don't need to, I was going to see if I could test it, but I don't really need to. Um, I do have to create two of these UV field things. So the second one I create will, is that where it goes? Yeah. The second one that I create will test all my automation of this. So I need neuroprocessing units. I should have the neutronium frames. And this might be a little bit longer of an episode. So I would like to get this crafted. All right, so all I need left is the 64 neuroprocessing units and these emitters. Um, the only problem is I feel like this is gonna get bunged up in the system. <laughs> I craft both of these at once. I'm a little worried about that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so this requires four of these. I was thinking this was a ZPM. This is actually UV. This has its own zebra recipe. Holy cow. All right. So 
So yeah, I gotta get this one set up before I can even attempt these two. <laughs> so yeah, looks like we probably won't be getting the ultimate battery this episode. Um, but I have set up some extra machines and made some progress towards getting it. Um, I will have to. I'll set up the emitter recipe in between episodes. I think. I'm not gonna do that on camera. Uh, let's take a look. How many more? Got four more neutronium. So chugging along here. Um, but that's gonna be it for this episode. I think. Next episode, we'll come back and we will get the ultimate battery sorted out, and then we can start figuring out how I want my end end game power set up. I'm thinking, I've done some testing with the battery uh, buffers, and no matter how many amps you have been sent into this battery buffer, it's not going to charge more than four batteries at once. And even the ultimate battery, I had 16 amps going in, and it was still only charging one. So it seems anything higher than... A one slot battery buffer is going to be completely pointless because it's never going to fill the other batteries. It's just never going to fill up. <laughs> it's like impossible. It's going to take hundreds of years to fill this up. Real life years to fill this entire thing up. So I may do multiple one slot and just have separate batteries going into each and having sending power into separate ones. I don't know. But I'm trying to decide. The main thing is, what tier do I want all my auto crafting at? I was thinking I wanted to do UV, but I think that is at this point is going to be a bit crazy with all the neutronium needed. I don't know. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe I'm going to go with LUV um, for all my mascot. I would do ZPM, but there is no ZPM battery which is a bit of an issue. Um, so yeah, i got to figure this out. I think, like I said, I think I'm going to upgrade all my machines to LUV. And then eventually, I know some extra batteries are being put in. Maybe we will upgrade my entire base to UV machines, which actually be pretty cool to see. Um, but anyway, that's going to be for next episode. Um, I did a little more building of my base. So hopefully it looks kind of cool. Um, <laughs> they're supposed to be statues. Uh, I think they look kind of cool. But uh, this will kind of be the entrance way. And then I will have my huge base on the side. Um, so not sure what it's going to completely look like. I have some ideas, but uh, hopefully this looks kind of cool for an entrance to my base eventually. I just got to figure out what we're planning on moving. Um, I don't know if I'm going to move all this set up. I may. Who knows? Um, but moving all this mycelium and everything. I don't know. We sell sh shall see. Yeah, the statues look a little cooler to the side. Um, but anyway, that's going to be it for this episode, so thanks for watching, and have a good one.